Hey guys, over three years ago, I compared the thermal paste against these thermal pads. And for the channel, they kind of made sense because I build systems all the time. So removing thermal paste and applying it, it was, yeah, a bit of a hassle and a pain. And I promised to make a follow-up video, basically a long-term opinion and feedback. How do these thermal pads, how did they work out for me? So the good news is I still use them. I still have the original thermal pads. Now they come in two sizes, 30 by 30 and 40 by 40. One thermal pad has not survived and that is because I used such a cooler with a round base. Uh, I've got another one here. So if you're using uh, a cooler that looks like that with the uh, round base uh, that is smaller than the thermal pad, do not use them, they can cut into the uh, material and basically, yeah, rip it apart. But on most other coolers that have a square or rectangular base, as long as the thermal pad fits nicely inside the base, you should not have any issues with uh, tearing them. Just a quick look again at the performance. We are using the Ryzen 5600G with the stock cooler and it had thermal paste pre-applied and the thermal pastes, they do perform a little bit better. So here we have Cinebench running for half an hour and we're getting 84 degrees maximum with an average of 82 degrees. The fan speed sits at 2600 RPM and the clock speed at 4330 megahertz. The pad on the other hand, we're getting 86 max and an average of 85 degrees. So that's two degrees higher on the max and three degrees higher on the average. The fan speed is identical. The clock speed is a tiny bit lower with 4307 megahertz. So in short, if you want the absolute lowest temperatures, you are better off using thermal paste. The thermal pad is a couple of degrees behind, so it offers solid performance and maybe it's on the level of some cheap thermal paste. But yeah, like I said, if you're getting some quality thermal paste, you will definitely see lower temperatures. I've done a lot of videos to do with LGA 2011, the X79 and X99 and I believe on such large CPUs, you're meant to put in uh, five dots, one in the center and then four in the corners with thermal paste. So it's just a lot of messing around and especially the cleaning at the end. And here the larger thermal paste, uh, thermal pads with 40 by 40, they work really well. We can definitely see that this one has been used. It's got some scratches and some marks but uh, it hasn't really affected the performance. And yeah, basically you need to look after them a little bit. Uh, don't uh, touch them with hands. You can get some grease on them. So uh, keep them clean. Uh, use a tool like this to uh, move them around and to handle them. And uh, then yeah, you shouldn't have too many issues. So yeah, you need to really ask yourself if these make sense to you. If you just have one PC and you're not changing coolers all the time, then yeah, just go with thermal paste, you know, um, it's not a big deal. But uh, for me, a content creator and uh, building new machines all the time, changing CPUs. For example, if I do a benchmark run and I want to compare seven LGA 2011 CPUs, that's a lot of hassle with uh, thermal paste and yeah, yeah, it's just a mess and you can see it in the uh, footage where I'm removing the stock cooler from the Ryzen system. Yeah, there's some grease left over and it's just a pain in the neck to clean. Um, you've got to have yeah tissues and paper and alcohol spray. And uh, for me, switching to the thermal pads, it has really made my life easier on the channel, cleaner, neater, and yeah, I'm not going back to paste. Now there are different brands of pads out there. I just stuck with this brand because it has worked well for me. I like the size 30 by 30 and 40 by 40 and yeah that's why I just stuck with the same brand but there are others out there that you can try and also you can buy sheets from Panasonic directly in larger sizes and cut them up and maybe that's a video I should be doing uh, looking at the model numbers they come in different sizes and thicknesses um, so yeah if that's of interest to you do let me know and apart from that there's not much really to explain the pads not quite as cool compared to the paste, but in terms of handling, cleaning, and frequent changing of the CPU cooler, they just make your life a lot 
easier. Also long term, uh, after 20 years, these will have the same cooling performance. You don't need to reapply them. The only danger is don't use them with coolers that have a round base. They can cut into the fabric, into the cloth and rip it apart. And that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you found it useful, a long-term feedback video, having used these pads for over three years on the channel with maybe, yeah, hundreds of builds um, from retro machines, Pentium 4, Athlon 64, up to modern stuff, Ryzen, Core 2, uh, LGA 2011, all sorts of machines I've used these pads with. Leave a comment down below. What are you using? Are you sticking with thermal paste or have you made the switch to pads and why? What are your reasons? What is your thermal uh, paste of choice? And give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, sub to the channel if you haven't done so already and let me know what video topics are of interest to you. And that's it. I shall see you soon with another one.